Ms. Josephine. Yes. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. A little tired, but good. Well, That's listen, what you know what they say, you know, they tell you that, you know, um, if you're not tired, then you're not doing nothing. So being tired, know, right? is, yeah. tired is a very good thing. You know, I'm looking at, my wife will tell you that I'm so into backgrounds and I see your background just reflects the person <laughs> who you are, right? A teacher, you know, all yeah. of that good stuff, you know, so I that's know. awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Listen, I appreciate, first of all, you taking the time to talk with us. Um, obviously, we're uh, calling you, uh, coming in from the encouragement campaign. Um, you know a little bit about us. We've had some conversations before. And one of the highlighted portions of our website and our YouTube channel is our COVID survivor stories. And the COVID survivor stories are basically those stories which um, persons who have been impacted um, talk about their story of victory. Um, what we understand is that um, it's so wonderful to be spending this moment in time with you. Yes, so, it is. So thank you. Thank you very much. Hercules, Hercules, thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, you know I tell everybody, I say, listen, when we're doing this, we're, we're sitting here, we're having coffee. You know, like we're at Starbucks. I got my coffee right yeah, here. Yeah. Well, I got a little water, all right? <laughs> okay. So you know, it's, it's a very yeah, it's a very it's a very low, low stress situation. We do it this way, this way, uh, folks can be comfortable wherever they want to be, and they can just kind of talk about it. What we find though is that it, it's a mutual benefit. You know, it's mm -hmm. it, it's a benefit for the persons who have seen so many things in the media and don't know anything about it and are so, so frightened in so many different ways about it, even today, one year plus later. And it also seems to, with some of the survivors that I talk to, it seems to be an opportunity to kind of let my story out. I want to let it out, you know, because when I was going through that very difficult moment, it was kind of a very uh, oftentimes lonely place. Um, just not knowing... Yeah minute by minute, moment by moment. And we just thank God that you that you were surviving and that you're there and flourishing and making things happen. And you know, yeah. what I'm gonna do, as always, I, I'm gonna stop running my mouth because I could talk, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm gonna stop running my mouth. The floor is absolutely yours. Thank you so much again on behalf of the Encouragement Campaign. We're looking forward to talking with you and telling us what your experience was. So my pleasure to be here, expressing myself on my story. Fantastic. It's still to this day, it's a little, I could say a little shocking for me to go ahead and realize what happened in the past. Right. Um, like I said, at some point I said I could write a story about it, right. but it's just so much detail that sometimes I just want to forget about what just happened that, that those days, because it was about for a month and a half. Wow. And as a mother of two and a housewife, it's just... It was a rough moment. Mm -hmm. I really, for a minute, I'm not gonna lie to you, I wasn't sure if I was gonna make it through. It gets me emotional because okay. I used to see my kids and I said, they're too young, you know? But something said, you know, I always said to God, hey, if it's my moment, go ahead, do it now. But if it's not, you know, don't let my kids look at me the way I am. Because no matter how much you try to avoid not looking the way you were looking, it was hard. It was hard looking at my husband, look at me and say, you know, I don't know what else can I do? How can I help you? You know, the least thing we wanted to do was go to the hospital because like I told him, at least I know you're going to bury me now. You're going to know who you're going to bury instead of just taking me to the hospital. You don't know who you're going to go ahead and take. So those were my ideas in that moment. And it was just hard. It was hard when you didn't understand what was wrong, what hurt you, how did it come about from being from one place to another where you were like, didn't, couldn't explain. And I used to lock myself in the bathroom many times and was scared because at some point I felt like I was giving up. I was giving up. I used to literally lock myself inside and say, you know, what happened? What happened to that woman where she, nothing threw her down? And, you know, I don't believe in medicine. I really do not believe in medicine. I will drink teas. I know my husband will, you know, make me drink ginger and garlic and all these weird tasty teas. Right. <laughs> and I was like, you strong. That's what he's trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> I said, babe, I don't want this no more. 
because my the way it affected me was awful. I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink. I couldn't stay still. And when I tried to walk, my legs would bend down. Like I couldn't stand up. I would literally need to hold on to something because it was scary. And once I used to get up, it was like the whole living room, wherever I was, would spin around. And just like that, and I was like, I got to eat. I got to, you know, consume something. And my husband's like, babe, you need to eat. You need to get up from that bed, get up from that sofa. And I tried. Mm -hmm. And your, your body just don't react. Mm -hmm. You say mentally you're prepared. You're telling yourself you're going to get up. And it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. It doesn't, you know, that was my frankness where I was like, oh my God, what if really I can't get up? Mm -hmm. What if I'm always going to be here laying down and, you know, my little one looking at her by my side every single day. I think that was the biggest challenge. And you know, it's funny because I look at her now and I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes I come out of work and it's stressful working with so many different kinds of kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then going back home and working with your own kids. I was like, oh, my God. And my little one used to tell, Mommy, you need to get up. Mommy, you need to go teach these kids. Mommy, get on Zoom, you know. And I couldn't. Right. I tried to, like, at some point I said, you know what, leave me alone. Just go away. And I thought that was the worst thing I said to my kid. But in the moment, you just don't know how to react because you're afraid of you know, having them get it. And the funny thing is that they never got anything, you know. <laughs> well, that's a blessing. They, they, they had some favors, so that's a good thing. They never had anything. Then my husband quit it, too. Oh. So we were both thrown in bed. Wow, wow. We were both, we couldn't get up. We don't, you know, at some point, we didn't even know how we were going to feed these kids. Thank goodness he's the type of man where he's like, you know, we're going to, you know, I'm going to go cook. I'm going to, you know, try to make myself strong. And I used to see him. And he would go make some kind of soup and everything, but I couldn't eat. Right. I think I lost, no lie, like 15 pounds just that whole month. And I said, this is not how I want to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a better way. <laughs> yes. And I was like, I used to, my friends used to call me FaceTime. I didn't want to see anyone. Mm -hmm. I used to call my parents. My parents also had COVID. When it first began, and they lasted four months. How, 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 four months. Say, that, say that again. How they long? Four months. With COVID. Four yeah. months with COVID. Wow. Four months. That was the first, the first yeah. year, the beginning. In the of beginning, COVID. right, right. Yes. Four months. Um, I don't know, and I'm blessed because God gave me the, another opportunity to spend more time with them, but both of them were really bad condition really bad we got to say to each other goodbye at some point because there my dad is 69 my mom is 68 my mom has diabetes too she now has dialysis so her diabetes is really bad so it was it's scary it's really scary what we all went through and to this day i'm still scared yeah I hear people still getting affected after, you know, after getting vaccinated. All these consequences with this vaccine that's come. I'm scared. Right. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. And, you know, I'm just going to continue with my fate. And that's about it. Because that fate kept me going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thanks to that, also, I still have my parents. Even though four months. Yeah. They were four months. My dad... A healthy person mm -hmm. that had nothing. Right. He literally said, I'm not gonna make it through. Mind you, he's the type of man that no. He's like, no, nothing is impossible. No, yeah. In that moment, he was sure he was so sure about it. He was in, yeah. So when it came to me, they were so concerned because I have a strange beer coffee. And that coffee would just, you know, because to this day these doctors don't really tell me what I really have. I thought I was a medic, but it doesn't, it's not, that's not what it is. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure what. So nowadays I'm like scared to go to the doctor. Because right. what they're going to tell me. But um, yeah, I got to speak to my parents and I even said goodbye. 
I got to say goodbye to my parents when I had COVID. I got to say and express my husband, you know, some secrets that, I, you know, I had it. Let him know that where things were for the kids. And, you know, it just was hard. And I know he said, babe, don't say it that. I was like, I just don't want to go to sleep because I'm afraid that I'm not going to wake up. You know, and sometimes I'll be so tired. I just didn't want to close my eyes because I thought I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to wake up. And, you know, the weakness on my bones and me not eating. My loss of weight that I had, my body just reacting totally different. Just, you know, just kept me like, should I keep trying? And it's those moments where I was sitting in bed and I just... What's wrong? Like, you don't know what's wrong with your body. You just, so weird. A weird feeling. Like, you don't understand. And the anxiety that I had, like, I didn't, I didn't understand why. Didn't understand why. And sometimes, I, thank goodness, I didn't have fever. I never got fever. Okay. I had diarrhea, vomiting, lots of coughing, weakness on my bones, but never had temperature. Hmm. The worst was the um lack of breathing that's Lacking. where Lacking. lack of breathing ah. breathing oxygen nice, yeah. and it was just like you were just like you you couldn't and you, either you know you would had to like literally like i tell my kids just take a deep breath and focus but you couldn't focus you couldn't take that deep breath because you were scared that that deep breath that was the end because it will hurt. It will totally hurt me. And it's just, you know, it was, it's a, it was a rough moment. It was really rough. You know, and to just say, what I was going to say, I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to cut you at all. I'm sorry. You know, I, I got to, I got to tell you that whenever, whenever I, um, and I'll use uh, direct language, whenever I have the luxury to sit with a survivor and to share that space in that moment in time, I wasn't there, but I'm there, you know, just imagining what that was, you know what I'm saying? And I've spoken to a lot of people and I'm a grown man and, and I get emotional. So, man, I tell you when I've been doing these uh, COVID survivor stories, I, if people don't know me, they would probably say, he a punk. He'd be tearing up and, you know, looking for a neck and give me a tissue, you know? Um, <laughs> but We all got feelings. We all got that little heart where, you know, happens no yeah. the strongest person there goes my dad where he, i used to say damn i don't i don't see that man cry ever right. <laughs> you know right. i did get to see my dad cry not the way i wanted him to cry but he did cry cry holding your hands when you're like you know it's been a journey and it might end now you know that's the same thing at some point, I hold on to my kids and my husband, and I said, you know, whatever whatever happened between you and I, and you're still here. You're still here. You're the father of my kids, and I love you to death because no matter what, you know, we have this relationship. Right. Like any other relationship, you know, we fight, we argue, but knowing that you was there in the moment that I needed you, mm -hmm. that's, that's big. what matters. Mm -hmm. That's what matters because you could have loved Mm -hmm. You could have left me there, but you did it. Mm -hmm. You motivated me, even though you was not too. Wow, wow! You know that's so Can powerful. I... What you just said was so powerful. You you motivated me, um, though yeah. you though you were going through the same thing essentially. Um, yeah, that's wow. Give me a minute. <laughs> oh, trust me. To this day, I sit back and I'm like, damn. Really, like, I wouldn't think I would say goodbye, you know, just so young. And I was like, yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like, I took, like, nowadays, I'm like, life is too short. Yeah. What I went through is too short, and I'm not wasting it. Right. Because it's not tomorrow. Right. And I told my husband, you know, is with you is now with you i'm gonna go on i'm gonna do what i have to do 
My dreams is to have my kids running around, have my house, have my car. It ain't stopping me. It ain't no stopping me no right, more. Right. There's, there's a song. There's a song that they use. Ain't no stopping us now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Wow. Wow. You know, um, you're the the the, the emotional peace resonates through through the technology let me say that um again yeah. not to be redundant i you know um i remember i remember when um i first became aware that you know someone that a person in your institution i didn't know who it was you know at that point you know had taken ill and there there is there is there is something there's something very significant when essentially you know you know you got your family but then there's a work family if that yeah. makes sense right mm -hmm. and then you find out you know you you've been pretty cool because everything has been a little not even cool let me not not let me not say it like that you've been whatever you've been but it wasn't it wasn't the family per se so you you couldn't you couldn't understand it the same way and then when i heard someone in your uh, institution we found out that that you had taken ill I didn't even know you, you know what I'm saying, like that. <laughs> we don't know each other now. Uh, we'll be, hey, I'm Dave. Good to meet you. All right, cool. The, the, the virtual <laughs> snake it in. Um, and but to 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 understand that someone had taken ill, um, it, it changes you. It, it it takes it takes a piece away from you. That's not even talking about what it what it did to you. But it's just talking about those people who love and care for you or merely those who are just acquaintances. It takes something away from you. And I know I would ask um, occasionally, you know, listen, how is the young lady doing? I didn't know your name. How is the young lady doing? You know, and, you know, I'd be told, yeah, it, she's, she's doing OK as far as I know, you know. And um, but to see you today, right, to see you today, okay. it's um, it's 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 empowering, right? Because I always look at that. I, yeah. always, I always look at it like this. There, there's some folks right now um, who, who are going through this who didn't have the same support that you had. You know, they didn't have that strong husband as you're talking about who could stand with you. And though he was going through what he was going through, he he's carrying and saying, let's make some soup or whatever it was that he was doing, right? Um, and, whatever uh, reason. <laughs> right. Well, listen, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying. But the bottom line is, he he was tongue in there. And a lot of folks, a lot of folks don't got that same luxury. You know, um, I know one of our early early COVID survivors told us that he went through this by himself. Mm, and it's sad. It's really sad. I mean, my respects I, to that person because <laughs> you know. And and you know would say say how folks would bring bring food to the door and leave it because they knew you know what was taking place or whatever it is, but mm -hmm. to have all of these twenty four hours a day by yourself going through some of the same emotions that that you're talking about right now, um, not to diminish anybody's experience, you know what you went through, what you just dropped on me for a couple few minutes. I, I'm holding my seat, so I'm falling off my seat right now. To be honest with you, but the truth, um, I'm, I'm trying to make it look stoic. <laughs> I'm trying. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to translate, but I'm doing what I could do. Um, what, what, what I can say, is, and the question that I have for you is this: Did it? Was it something that gradually hit you? Did you? Did you forecast something wasn't right, or was it one day you were good, and then a day later? Or did it? Was it a gradual lead up to you being not feeling what you what you what you were going through, or feeling sick? Yeah, it just unexpectedly. I didn't, you know. Apparently, I had a couple of days already with it, and um, I, the only thing that I just felt was just tiredness. Because I even came to class and I said I felt hot, like, but I I didn't I didn't have no temperature. I didn't. You know, it was just, like, let's say hot flashes I had, like, it was really hot. And I was like, right. what's wrong? Right. And I just kept ignoring it. I just continued to ignore it. I'm not going to lie you. Before I went test, got tested, two days before, I went to a party. Ooh. I went to a party, but at that party, everybody was tested. 
because mm. to that party was a kid's party. So we wanted to make sure everybody was safe. Obviously. Right. So, yeah. So I was tested and I said negative. And I was like, but wait, why, how, and what, you know, uh, confusing. But then I started like, okay, so where could it have happened? But like, you know, elevators, outside, supermarket, you know, Anywhere. random. That's it. Anywhere. Just like that, you get it. And But I didn't have no fever the only thing was like i said hot flashes for like about four days mm. four days before that party and after that party i remember i had a couple of drinks and i thought it was like a hangover you know <laughs> <laughs> i said i'm pretty you know that's what i thought is that i can get and through it i've seen the hangover <laughs> before <laughs> so i was like okay I thought it was just a random headache. Right. I drank Tylenol. The next day, I was fine. Mm-hmm. Come to work, and now my legs, my legs are, like, tiring. And I was like, okay. I felt like, you know, maybe I need to work out. Maybe this, you know, being home the whole time, you know. I was like, maybe it's time to work out. Then all of a sudden, I started feeling, you know, like, dizzy with headaches. And... I said, you know what, let me go check. It was then out a weekend again. And I said, let me go check myself. But I had seen my husband kind of weird. Mm. So I said, do you go to a COVID? And he's like, yeah, but it's negative. But he's always coughing because he has asthma. Mm. Okay. But now I feel like his coughing is worse. I mm. said, okay, it's kind of weird. Right. But he said he was negative. And I, then we went again and he tested negative. So Sunday comes... Now, everything is hurting. Mm. Everything is hurting, bothering me, just just a weird feeling. Right. But it's inexplainable. Like, I thought it was a cold. I was like, maybe that's what it is. Okay, let me just drink another Tylenol and that's it. Right. But no, I go to um, the morning, I got up, I cooked, and I just felt like the, the kitchen just, just spinned around. But like I said, I was like, is it, do you think I, I you know, I was like, no, let me not think about it. Hopefully not. I, the next day was Monday. I'm like, no, we're not doing that. No, just, right. it's probably, okay. No, I had to go ahead and do a COVID test just for the safe of the site and the staff and myself. Yeah. I had to do a COVID test. But I'm here thinking, you know, I'm fine and everything. Mm-hmm. When I get those results, throw me off. <laughs> to say the least. Mind <laughs> <laughs> you, I go down. She's in the other room. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. The, um, I go get the results, and I tell my husband, I was like, it's positive. He's like, no, it can't be. I was like, but I don't have, like they say, fever. I don't have chills. I'm not coughing. You know, maybe my bones, but I said maybe work it out. <laughs> you right, right. Know, maybe that's what you need it. Right. No. And it showed that I was positive. Funny thing, that my husband didn't show symptoms until a week later. Mm. And I already had COVID. Mm-hmm. Which was strange because technically if you're already with the person, be sleeping right. in the same, you know, yeah. living in the same place, you would think. Right. But no. Mm-hmm. He did three tests. That the, at the clinic they were like, all right, it's every you could you can't do it that frequently, but we need to make sure because of work. That was our excuse. Yeah, so yeah. he um he's like, but it's still negative. How is that possible? I was like confusing. And then he comes, he's like, babe, you see, I told you this is all medical. I was like, I don't know what to tell you, but I know I'm positive. We had the kids with me, and he's like, well, we're not gonna take the kids nowhere because. I'm still negative. We're just going to go ahead and isolate ourselves. I was like, isolate yourself? <laughs> Everything was just, how are you going to do that? Right. With a five-year-old? <laughs> that, that's not going to happen. You can't. No matter how not much. easily. <laughs> no matter how much you try. You can't isolate yourself from your kids and living in a one-bedroom apartment. Yeah, yeah. That can't happen. How? Right. Okay. So he's like, no. We, they're not going to get it. They're going to be fine. I was like, well, how about you? He's like, I'm fine. Don't worry. So he went and came back the week later. That's when he showed that he was positive. 
I was like, wait, that is crazy. Right. Does it make sense? Right. It didn't make sense. And to this day, it doesn't make sense to me. Right. That's when, when they say, oh, go ahead and do it. How? It could still happen. It could right. come to until right. later on after probably the next person is over and then now that person. So mm-hmm. it doesn't, it didn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. And that's how we became aware. But we didn't, he didn't have symptoms that whole week. Wow. Nothing, just his coughing. But like I said, his coughing comes from his asthma, but nothing different, nothing, you know, it was just deeper, but he was fine. And then when he got the test result came back, that's when we, he's like, oh, I'm positive. I was like, oh, and I already had a week, a week and a half already about with it. So it didn't, you see, that's things that doesn't make sense to me to this day. And to him, he's like, this is all made up. Mm-hmm. This is completely made up. Right. I was like, what can I tell you? Now, when you say made up, what do you mean by that? Flesh that out. What do you mean? When it's made up, like, there's hidden stories behind government to him. Okay. And he would, with bits between polit- politics, uh, what is it, politics and presidents and, you know, something was made up there mm-hmm. for him. And listen, the reason the reason that I ask that question, because um, he, by no stretch of the imagination, is the first person who I've heard say that, all right? Um, what I quickly say is I'm not an authority on anything. Um, what I do know, well, some things, but not this. Uh, <laughs> I was just thinking, talking about dummy. I know a few things. Um, <laughs> what I will say is, <laughs> what I will say is that um, the way this 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 virus has impacted folks has been so vast, right? Because certain people they go through it. They never. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were like, "Listen." I, I found out that I had it, but I didn't know. I think they call that asymptomatic, right? So you're walking around with it and you don't know. Yeah. And the new terminology, and it's not new, it's terminology I heard somebody talk to me recently who I thought was um, ill, a good friend from years ago. He said, yeah, I had a, a false negative. You know, that's some terminology he threw on me, false negative. And then you hear this and you hear that. And and, and there's so many things about this this whole thing that it puts people in a situation where they don't know what the heck is going on. And particularly particularly in inner city communities, you know, where uh, the per capita, if you will, of folks is, is a little, <laughs> if that makes sense, right? And yeah. and people don't know and people are hurting and and misinformation about masks and all of that. And we won't get into the dynamic of that. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it's so powerful to be able to talk about, okay, this is this is how my situation went. Because somebody else, whether they're in Arizona or whether they're in Europe or whether whatever may stumble onto these COVID survivors stories and it may very well bless them. It may mm-hmm. have- it may make them, and that's our prayer, and that's our hope, that they will yes. pay attention a little bit more. Let's not be caught up in thinking, that, no, not me. Yeah, because it could it could be me yeah. tomorrow, quite frankly, right? Um, I know for I know that the experiences are so different, but they're so the same in so many different ways. You know, yes. everybody had a home remedy. You know, everybody I talked to has had a home yeah, remedy. Everybody. Everybody, everyone, uh, and different. You know what I'm saying? So everybody had a chance to go back to their roots, if you will. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I remember great great grandma, or I remember Tia. Or I remember this. You know what I'm saying? And go back and say, well, let's try this, and let's try, uh, let's try that. And folks were going back to the basics, trying to identify, particularly when we didn't have a vaccine. Um, here we are now with a vaccine, and 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 that's that's a whole mixed bag, which we can talk about another time. Uh, but it, the, we now have a vaccine, um, and 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 folks are uh, running towards it like hotcakes, if that makes sense. Um, and, and and you see me, you see me stutter. I'm not a stutter. I'm like, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but but um, as I've said before, I'm one who believes in science, right? I also um, believe in technology you know, because we can have a chance to see it, but that doesn't preclude um, upbringing, doesn't preclude some of the things yeah. that we know, some of the things that, and, and I think, I think we have to continue to be in a quest for, uh, for information. 
I think one of the questions that I love to ask, and I hope you'll receive this question, is what do you think that it was that gave you the <clears throat> the Mike Tyson to get up and go and make it happen? You know, I know that there were some some mountains, there were some some peaks and some valleys. We we understand, but in the final analysis, I find that everybody had to hold on to something. Um, many people revisited their spirituality right a lot of times folks uh, hey, listen folks forgot their spirituality so like, give them spirituality <laughs> right? <laughs> but i tell you what covid covid made made people go back to when they were three years old say now i remember there, there was this cat what was his name again oh yeah god <laughs> you, <laughs> you understand that people that yep. way it was um what was it that that gave you that extra drive? I, I heard you mention your babies. The thing that I got I got to confess, what resonated for me, I missed the whole conversation. Okay, is you said that you said goodbye to your parents and your family. I did. One thing we know about people, right? People are all different. We got that. But when we'll go to our nearest and dearest, being our husbands or our wives, our mothers, our fathers, you know, the, 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 the hierarchy in the family and say, yeah. Look, I just want to take time to tell you I love you and, and so on and so on. We got to understand that means that we're in what I think we learned is called dire straits, meaning we don't we don't necessarily see tomorrow. <laughs> we don't. But we want to no. make we want to make sure we get this this piece out real quick just yeah. so I can Rest at ease. <laughs> if, if that's, <laughs> God, please, that's not what I want right now. Please yeah, let us. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, if if we must die, let us nobly die, and let's make sure we have the opportunity to touch the ones that we love and say some of those things that we don't say every day. I find that I find that people learn yeah. to love better. You know, um, a lot of times when when you we're, we're in our day to day operation running back and forth to work, doing this and the chaos mm -hmm. and coming up. Sometimes we kind of lose the benchmark, if you will, of that person that we said, I do, I do, I do. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody's under such a chaotic strait and we're trying to figure out the, the bills and the kids and this and that and the other. But, <laughs> exactly. You know, so I think that I think that many people now listen, it was it was a bad scene for many people to be locked down for that period of time that they were locked down. That was a bad situation for yes. many people. But I think that there's a whole a whole other period, uh, a whole other fabric of people who were able to become closer, you know, whether they were impacted or whether or not. Because then we, <clears throat> we had the chance to really be stripped down to the bone and understand that you and me and my wife and your husband and, and our friends we're the same people. We all we all get up in the morning, put our pants on one leg at a time. Everybody do that, yep. right? So let's some of the things that we've been taught um, in terms of everything that we've been taught, but we don't have enough time for that. But <laughs> some, some of the things <laughs> we just don't. Some some of the, the things that we've negated that most precious thing, which has been to love love our people for dear life. Does that make sense to love yes, our real life? So, what was that thing? I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I just had, I had to, I had to give you what you gave me. What, what was that thing that, what was that thing that really took you to the, to the space that you, that you say, you know what, we getting through this. First of all, I think, like I said, at some point I lost faith. But looking at the side who was there, that's what kept me keep going. But I think being together as a family and the faith that my parents, well, my loved ones, we've been always a family like this right. everywhere. Right. And through the rough moments, it has been an achievement mm -hmm. that no matter what, we're there. Beautiful. We Beautiful. could have arguments scream and so like any other family of course but we were there like sisters like mother and daughter like father and daughter husband and wife they were there 
And that was a big reason. If you at some point thought you was no one, you meant a lot for those people. Mm -hmm. Especially looking at my two kids where I'm not going to say my husband has been the best dad. We've been ups and downs. But in that moment, he was the best husband. Awesome. And like I said, at some point, we was going to get divorced. <laughs> but you realize that nothing is bigger than that faith that importance that you are for that person. Mm. And like I said, I think it was just the family being together. I'm not going to lie. Not all my siblings are there. I have four sisters. Wow. How did, hold up, sidebar, how did dad do with four daughters? Oh my God, oh my God. Dad, I want to beat you. You are a strong fella. Oh, sorry. Did I say that on tape? My bad. <laughs> four girls. Four girls. He's a rich man. He's a rich man. I get to him. <laughs> and he only has two grandsons. They're all girls. Mm, wow. They're 12 girls in total. Hold up, hold on, hold on. Give me a second. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make yeah. sure. Let me make sure. Because I don't you know I don't have any I don't have any daughters. I got two boys, you know that, right? <laughs> I know you have two Listen, boys. I'm, I'm, I'm scared yeah. of daughters, to be honest with you, but that's another story. So so what I understand is there's four sisters plus twelve granddaughters. Oh, in total, twelve girls in his life. <laughs> and only three boys. Yeah. Wow, that's wow. it. I hope I'm blessed to meet him one day. I want to shake his hand. I want to say, "Listen, man, whatever it is, oh. you need, you need to bottle it and save and sell it." <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, sounds like a man of esteem. I appreciate him. I don't even know, him, but I'm excited to know about him. Um, wow, you know, you said something powerful, and everybody always says something powerful when they when they when they're having these conversations. And they talk about you know, I know, I don't know, I know you're recording, but I could ask him if you want him to. Join this campaign. Listen, uh, senior survivor. <laughs> listen, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. If it's something that makes sense, and yeah, it's fine. Again, like I said, we having coffee, so you know, whatever happens, happens. It's very organic. Um, yeah, I I would definitely be excited to have a chance to speak with him to be able to get a different perspective. This whole thing is, you know, this whole thing is really having as many people from different walks of life as possible. And so I I didn't I was remiss and I didn't say. I really want to say that you're probably the first teacher COVID survivor that we've had oh, the chance, yeah. that we've had the opportunity to interview. So, you know, thank you so much for giving us that perspective. Yeah. Um, and we can talk about, you know, dad offline, you know? My mind, my mind sucked. I said, hold on, no, not now, not now. Stop, stop, stop. No. <laughs> um, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Everybody, everybody talks about what helped them to get through it, and everybody. Yeah. Uh, we had one um, one lady on who's a singer, uh, professional opera singer, and she said, mm -hmm. "You just got to do the work." And then we had another young cat who said, um, "We are the vaccine in terms of our mind and keeping it strong and saying we're going to get through it." And people have said a myriad of things, which I've just putting your mind to, yeah. You know, I've been nourished and I've been blessed just to understand that 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 pure mindset, right? That pure mindset of of people just uh, you we're, we're being vulnerable, right? To be able to talk about what was able to get us through and what we can through, yeah. pay forward to someone else who very well may be facing this, or if it's not someone facing it, a family member or a friend of a family member may be facing it, and if someone can get a an additional inspiration because of Josephine's story, then it's worth it. Does that make sense? Then it's worth it. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, I, think, yes. I think that um I think that after these type of things, uh, these type of situations, it's 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 categorized as a new birth. Right? A new birth. Yeah, that's you know, so so here you are now and you have the opportunity to think about things in different perspective in different ways. And like you said, Every oh, day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
talk about that a little bit, and I'm not going to keep you long. These are never longer than an hour, you know, unless people just want to say for three hours, I can hang out all day. But tell, tell me about how it's changed your mindset and, and how it's now propelled you to do some different things. Um, and let me shut up. It's on you. Um, what can I say? I'm, it didn't change me as a person. I'm really caring and loving, really respectful. I, you know, I'm down to earth to anything. Um, I don't say, I don't like to say no. It's right. a life experience. If I could do it, if they trust that I could do it, then that means I could do it, you know. Um, things that, like, let's say, for example, the form of thinking, like, what will people say, especially my parents? At some point, it sounds kind of crazy, but a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to Mr. Belize. Hmm. And I don't know her, but anyway. You don't know her. Yeah, you're sorry. <laughs> um, and I said, you know what? Um, I want to I wanna go ahead and do something that I've always said I've wanted to do. And it took me five years. Five years. Mind you, after what happened to me, it took me, I think, less than a month to do it. Right. Right. And just was scared about what would they say, especially my parents. Mm -hmm. At some point, I know my, my partner, my husband would have said, don't do it. It sounds crazy. It's not a big deal. But for me, it was something that I always wanted to do. Right. It was a tattoo. Sounds crazy. No, a tattoo. It was funny. I, I, I kind of intuitively, I'm like, mm -hmm, I know what that was, but okay. <laughs> a tattoo. And I was always concerned about, no, it's not fine. No, I shouldn't do it. What well, my parents are going to say this and that. And after that, how it hit me real hard, I said, no, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Yeah. Because if God gave me another chance, it's because I got many things to do. I got many things to do, and I have not done half of it. Now you told, <laughs> see, see, now you get me real excited. You told my language because we understand that you've been preserved for a reason. Yeah, there's a reason why. Yeah. Been, meaning your work, your work is not done. You know, there's a lot of things that we were going through a space to get to, but now we're yep. there. So... Launch, baby. Launch. Yes. <clears throat> wow. That's what I'm making. And to this day, I'm like, do I want to do another one? Maybe a bigger one. <laughs> you're, you're an autopilot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why you come one of these days with my whole arm? Like, Yo, oh. hey, Josephine, good to see you. <laughs> Yeah. Like, no, but it was. Josephine, you look so different. Oh, my God, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, but it's it's a minor stuff. Right. It's a minor thing that I always wanted to do, and I was just scared. I was yeah. just scared. What would they say? What was going to happen? You know, if I was going to get sick or because there was a lot of little fake stories about doing certain things, and I was like, you know what? I'm like, okay. Yeah. I went in, sat down, and I said, there won't be no tomorrow. But today, if I want to go, I could go now at least with that. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> and, I was happy. Right. Was and so, happy. It made me think and reflect many things after that. Hmm. Not wasting my time. That's in Not. That, and that's, that's the key phrase. That's the key phrase that, that I take. And matter of fact, I want to put that, I want to put that when, when we put your name up, I want to put Josephine, not wasting my time. Not wasting my time. Wow. <laughs> wow. I like nope. it. Give me a second. I'm looking at my phone so I can make sure I'll have to call you later. To find myself <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I think I think yeah. I think I think it's so important to be able to kind of um this 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 situation has helped us to become unshackled. Right? Yeah. And and so so many of the things that we were caught up thinking about were relevant and many of them were irrelevant, right? Uh, many mm -hmm. of the things that <clears throat> we were carrying, <clears throat> pardon me, we were carrying and loving, loving everybody else, but we weren't loving ourselves the way we needed to love ourselves. And that was my big problem, always caring about others and didn't care about myself. And Nowadays, I'm working out. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, yeah. But, but, yeah. but, but it's, it's, it's a renewal. It's a renewal of self you know um it's it's another opportunity it's it's a change of the page um 
Wow, I like it. You're I'm I'm so inspired right now. Oh, I want to ask you another question before you say, Dave, listen, I'm out. I'm done. Let me let me ask you this. So as you <laughs> <laughs> Dave, Dave, all right, enough. I'm finished. Um <laughs> so so when you <clears throat> many people have told me that they they was very, very, very sick. And then one day they just got up and sat up in their bed and they said, wow, I feel pretty good. Like a, like a light switch had gone off. Not to me. That was your I deal. Mean, it wasn't me. Okay. That wasn't me. It took me a while to come outside. Okay. I was scared. Mind you, I'm the type of person that loves to be outside. Right. Loves to be outside. And I was scared. Once I started getting up from the sofa, from the bed, little by little, because I couldn't even, I used to roll over mm -hmm. just to go down. So now I'm like, you know, trying to get myself together and getting down the proper way. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Was still scared. I remember my husband told me, how about you go outside? Because we have a balcony. Mm -hmm. And I said, how about you go out? He said, how about you go outside and take some air? Right. My hand was like this, wow. shaking. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to, I was scared I was going to fall. Wow. I was scared that, you know, once I came out and, breathe that air right. it was just gonna you know it was gonna spin and something was gonna happen i was scared so we didn't ha that didn't happen till literally the fourth day i was running out of milk i was running out of beans and it was something that i needed already at home and my dad i remember he's like don't go outside i said but i need to see what's out there I can't stay locked up. I cover myself, put my mask. I know we're not supposed to go out, but I needed to. I needed to go outside. Right. I needed my body to get up, and you know you gotta continue. Right. And I went out with my daughter, and my daughter's like, "Let's take the shopping cart." Mm -hmm. I'm like this with the shopping cart. My legs were shaking, first and last, and didn't come out until two weeks later. Wow. Couldn't do it. Wow. Couldn't do it. Until so with teas and herbs and the air purifier and let's go back in the years when grandma was alive with all these remedies. Right. That's how. That's how literally I got up. And with the faith of God and the um support of my family, because my sister later came on, because I couldn't take it no more. My sister used to sleep with me not caring, not thinking. She was there. She was there to support me in every single way. Wow. Every single way, taking care of the babe, taking care of my kids, even helping my husband out. Mentally, emotionally, physically, I did needed a lot of help. I literally needed, you know, therapy on my legs, like to move them, to be, to not, because my legs were still scared. Mm. So that's when I started, like, little by little, she would walk with me and she would tell me, let's go out for a walk. Maybe you need to, like, your body needs to, you know, start all over baby steps. And that's the way I did it. Wow. We started with the balcony, little by little with the shopping cart. But my legs will fold. My legs will fold and I wouldn't understand why. Because now when my sister came over, she will feed me. You need to eat. You need to eat. And... Like I said, with, you know, I guess just the whole the faith that she had that you're going to get better. You're going to get up, you know. And she would talk to me with some strong tone. And I was like, you sound like mom. <laughs> and at some point, I would just cry like a little girl. Mm -hmm. But she'll pick me up. My husband will help her. And we got to keep going. You, you got we was together. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, listen, I'm I'm definitely um you 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 see me around enough. I'm a big proponent of family. <clears throat> you know, um, as far as I'm concerned, family's where it's at. You know, at the end of the day, and it sounds like you guys have a phenomenal family. You know, as you've said a number of times, you know, families. You know, they do like everybody else. You know, we have our ups, we have our downs. But in the final analysis, <clears throat> we know that when we need to depend on somebody, those are the ones that we need yeah. to handle. And mm -hmm. I think the credit to your family and Hercules for them is the fact that you were ill for 30 days. 
let's let that wash over. Yeah, you know it better than anybody else. But I'm saying 30 days is a long time. Oh yeah. Um, that's a long time. <clears throat> and in that 30 <clears throat> in that 30 days, as I hear you talking about your, your legs and, and your muscles and so on and so forth, it's it's a it's a matter of relearning mm -hmm. how yeah. to do everything. But yeah. but now we say, well, hold on, I'm 25 now. It's very difficult for me to really relearn how to walk. And mm -hmm. so I think that the psychological kicks in. So now we got the whole psychological piece, which is worried almost like we were children. It, it, you have children. So you remember you remember when the babies were walking around the, uh, the coffee table? <laughs> remember that? <laughs> I think every parent has that. So I can use that one. Um, but it, it sounds to me like it was the same situation, you know? So listen, I'm going to tell you, um, I just celebrate you sharing your story. If you had to tell someone um, or recommend to someone how to get through a very difficult time like this, what would you tell them? What would I tell them? Faith, do not lose faith, and always believe that there's a reason why you're here. Wow, wow. There's always a reason. And God don't give second God don't, God could give you many chances because there's a reason why He's giving you those chances. Mm -hmm. Honestly, wow. like I said, I still got many things to do. <laughs> I still got many things to do. Listen, and 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 your your smile indicates it. I got many things to do. <laughs> I got many things to do. I definitely do. Well, listen, yep. you know, um, I know it. I I've, I've been blessed by. A couple few minutes that that you've shared with us. Thank you so much for not seeing it as robbery to share your story with the uh, encouragement campaign community. Um, you know, we'll, we'll talk later. <clears throat> you know, to kind of talk about where it is and so on and so forth. Um, we just we feel better because we've had a chance to get to know your your story of victory. You know, yeah. we feel stronger knowing your story of victory. And you know, on behalf of the entire team, I just want to thank you. And um, I look forward to us having a chance to talk again real soon. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. All my right. pleasure. And thank you will, so much. My pleasure. And I will be in touch with you shortly. Sounds good. Thank you so much. <laughs> you All the best. Stay, stay safe and stay well. Thank you. Same to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you That's right. Let's smile. <laughs> Bye. Bye.